1170UT, 1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies, Module 8, Video Clip 8.1, Gender and Psychological Development. Here are the guiding questions for this video. How are our notions of gender developed? Can you identify in your own life what role models you had for gender identity? How has technology changed or modified the gender role models available to kids today? That's a really big question. And can you identify some positive or negative gender stereotypes that relate to technology? Gender identity versus sex. Sex refers to biological characteristics distinguishing males from females due to primary sex characteristics and secondary sex characteristics. Whereas gender is a socially constructed notion that varies from one society to the next. The sociological and psychological significance of gender is that it is the means by which society tends to control its members and sorts us, based on our gender identities, into different life experiences and expectations. Some researchers argue that XX versus XY, our chromosomal female versus male differences, result in differences in conduct, with males being more aggressive and females being more comforting and nurturing. The dominant psychological perspective stresses that people in every society determine what maleness and femaleness mean. So males and females take the positions that society assigns to them. Think how this might change in a digital world. Our attitudes to the roles of men and women related to technology are also socially constructed. We do create things called sex type roles. In general, research has found that there's not a single society known where women as a group have decision-making power over men. Consequently, sociologists classify women as a minority group. Studies of pre-modern societies have consistently found that activities and jobs are sex-typed and greater prestige is given to male activities regardless of what those activities are. So it's not the work that provides the prestige, but the gender associated with it. Which of these roles do you believe are predominantly male or female? Out of nursing, teaching, engineering, childcare, business management, physicists, university professors, garbage collectors, veterinarians? I bet we all have some stereotypes that may be partially true as to whether these roles are predominantly taken by men or women. Well, how do those notions evolve? Think to yourself about the gender role models you have had and why you might have grown up to believe that certain jobs were more male while others were more female. Reflect on how these stereotypes evolve and how we react when individuals step outside their normal gender roles. There still exist in the world many gender inequities. Global inequities occur in some of these areas. In education, out of one billion illiterate people in the world, two-thirds of those are female. So there's a strong relationship between lack of education and poverty, and the majority of the world's poor are women. In politics, women generally lack access to national decision-making. There's no national legislature in the world where there are as many women as there are men. And in a pay gap, in every nation, women tend to have average less pay than men, even for the same jobs, and often do double work at home as they are assigned traditional roles as childcare. Let's take a look at how your own gender identity was formed for your work or education aspirations. As a young girl or boy, what subjects did your parents expect you to study or not study? What jobs were you encouraged to pursue? What are or were your parents' expectations for themselves? And are these different from yours? Were they based on your cultural backgrounds and how your culture defined what was okay for a girl versus a boy? And what are your current partner's expectations? Are they genderized as well? Language is also often used to devalue girls and women. Let's think of some common phrases that emphasize this stereotype. You throw like a girl. Big girls don't cry or, for boys, be a man. You gotta man up. Put-downs of boys when they're not courageous are not really the same. For example, parents don't berate girls for, you're acting like a boy. What about gender relations in speaking? In general, we find that men are more likely to interrupt a conversation and control changes in topic. This is from Meyer's textbook on psychology. 
Sociologists have noted that conversations between a man and woman are often more ranked like an employer-employee conversation might be. Men tend to interrupt more at the university level, especially if the instructor is a woman. Boys tend to get classroom teachers' attention more often, and girls are usually rewarded for being obedient, quiet, passive, um, so that they're called the nice girl. Otherwise, they have a negative connotation and are called tomboys. How about gender relations in work? Women are often penalized unofficially for taking time to have children, creating a gap in their competitive work lives. Men in, quote, female jobs are often promoted faster as they're perceived to be more competent just because they're male. Male nurses might be an example of that. And women often face double duty in terms of family care for children or elders. Women do more unpaid work in the home, and this is never actually considered in the overall economic situation. The Toronto Star on July 21st, 2012 featured an article in the business section about Yahoo's new CEO, Marissa Myers, and they referred to what they thought would be her daunting challenge of being a new mother and running a billion dollar company. I'd like to read you a short excerpt from the clip. Stakes are high in Marissa Myers' appointment July 16 as the latest CEO of struggling internet giant Yahoo Inc. As the Wall Street Journal put it, within hours of the news, the real conversation began. Namely, can a first-time mom, Myers' son is due in early October, master the challenges of parenting while executing a turnaround, the most difficult of management assignments, at a multi-billion dollar multinational enterprise? The role of women in the workplace is hardly a settled issue. In 2010, a U.S.-based Pew Research Center survey found that 37% of adults regard mothers of young children working outside the home to be bad for society. Just 21% hold the opposite view. Women are still routinely sidelined on returning from maternity leave, the misfortune of two exceptionally able friends of the author of the article. A recent study in the American Sociological Review determined that given identical resumes, a mother is 70% less likely to be hired and 100% less likely to be promoted. Joan Williams, expert in workplace law at the University of California Law School, calls it the maternity wall. The blogosphere was soon flooded with posts arguing the pros and cons of Meyer's decision, which includes not just taking the Yahoo job, but vowing to work throughout a brief maternity leave. In a cover story Thursday on Meyer, USA Today quoted a top cosmetics executive who recalled how much more difficult that course turned out to be than she had expected. You have no idea about what's to come, she said of the earliest months of motherhood, noting especially the drain on her energy. The hypocrisy here is stark. Would anyone raise an eyebrow if the new CEO of Canadian Tire was about to become a father for the first time? A woman friend of mine, who was a long-time telecom exec, asked me this week. Of course not. Meyer's most talked about status this week is evidence that women are still regarded as society's primary caregivers. In June of last year, Larry Page, co-founder and new CEO of Google Inc., Maya's alma mater, was reported to be expecting a second child. It was a one-day news brief and didn't trigger a national debate over Page's ability to be a good dad while running the monster that ate the internet. By contrast, it's hard to argue that Meyer's appointment isn't a sort of gender bellwether, says Bonnie Rochman, gender issues columnist at the time. If she stumbles, it won't be chalked up solely to the sheer difficulty of her task. It's practically inevitable that her pregnancy will be cited. Rockman noted a 2011 post on Business Insider by U.S. venture capitalist Paige Craig, who bluntly asserted that a pregnant founder CEO is going to fail her company. Birthing and raising kids seems like the toughest job around without adding the stress of running a business. You don't grow a human and turn around a company at the same time very easily, Julia Hartz, co-founder of Eventbrite Inc., an online ticketing service and mother of two children, told the journal. The odds at Yahoo do weigh heavily against Meyer 37. She is the sixth Yahoo CEO in five years. Revenues at the former Internet Trailblazer, based in Sunnyvale, California, have dropped one-third in the past four years. And 2011 profits were down 17%. The stock is worth only 14% of its 1999 all-time high. 
But tech is in a turmoil. U.S. tech firms announced more than 50,000 job cuts in this year's first half, a 260% jump over the same period in 2011. Tech turnarounds are rare. Apple Inc. aside, once a Nortel Networks Corporation, Research in Motion, Sun Microsystems, or Palm Inc. starts circling the drain, the laws of physics are seldom revoked. And studies have shown that outsiders are less likely than internal hires to succeed as savior CEOs. Meyer presided over most of the good things that have happened at Google in a 13-year stint there straight out of Stanford University, where she graduated as one of the Valley's top women computer engineers. Her Google regimen was 90-hour work weeks and weekly attendance at some 60 meetings. Meyer's work family balance is bound to be fraught, even for a wealthy, married, elite mom as many armchair critics have described her. Golda Meir said it best perhaps when she was Israeli Prime Minister. At work you think of the children you've left at home, at home you think of the work you've left unfinished. Such a struggle is unleashed within yourself. So there is something for us to discuss in tutorial and certainly shows that the role of gender and technology and leadership in the technology industry is still gender biased. What about the men? Is the world of men changing? How is it changing? Are there unrealistic expectations for men? Is there a reverse discrimination occurring when jobs have quotas for minorities including women? And how would the men's hockey team celebration with beer and cigars be perceived? Check out these clips and see what you think after the women's Olympic hockey team celebrated on the ice with real, really male type behavior. <laughs> Members of the Canadian women's hockey team faced cameras less than 24 hours after they were caught by photographers celebrating their gold medal on the ice at Canada Hockey Place with champagne, beer, and cigars. We are very sorry that we might have offended some Canadians or some other people around the world. I can tell you that uh, this is a bit of a, something we've done after Torino and after Salt Lake City. For some of the, our girls, it's the last time they'll ever skate at the Olympics and to go back on that ice and to just lay on it or kiss it or take pictures there, it's so special. Although they apologized Friday, the women still believe they did nothing wrong. The head of the Canada Olympic Committee agrees. With a spilling out of the celebration that was going on in the dressing room, a few of the athletes went on the ice. Um, as far as we're concerned, the matter's closed. But that doesn't mean the controversy is over. The International Olympic Committee says they'll ask the Canadians for an explanation of what happened on the ice. The IOC has reprimanded athletes for their post-medal celebrations in the past. We just got carried away with the celebration. Uh, we had worked so hard to win this medal here in Canada. And, uh, you know, when we got back to the dressing room, I don't think any of us knew what was going on. We were just enjoying the moment. and. Unfortunately, uh, we left the dressing room, and we apologize for that. Fielding questions on the controversy, though, didn't seem to take any luster off their Olympic gold. Jason Bronis, the Associated Press, Vancouver, British Columbia. Here are the synthesis questions for this video. How do gender roles shape our expectations for men and women? As you move to the next video, Examine the lens that you're looking through when it comes to how you approach technology. Would you have expectations that are different because you're male or female? Do, ob do you observe any differences in how children approach technology based on gender? For example, the kinds of video games they choose, what their skill level is, or their aptitude. I look forward to the debates and discussions and tutorial this week. <laughs>